Hello and welcome to Nikolai's Genetics Lessons and today's question is congenital deafness in human beings is inherited as a recessive condition in the following pedigree to deaf individuals each presumably homozygous for a recessive mutation have married and produced four children with normal hearing. Proposed an explanation. And basically what uh, most people who study genetics would be uh, perplexed about would be how this couple who has uh, geni a recessive genetic disorder can produce four children and none of them would have this genetic disorder. For example, uh, if we would use simple Mendelian genetics in order to explain what we see here, we can say that, for example, people in the first generation here are heterozygous, so they are phenotypically normal. And, for example, those people who are affected in their children would have homozygous recessive condition. This person can be with a homozygous dominant or heterozygous and would be normal. And when two homozygous recessive people who has this condition would marry, we of course expect that all their offspring would also have the same genotype for this genetic disorder. And the same is true with this family. So we expect that these people have to be heterozygous, so they would be phenotypically normal, but some of their children may inherit two defective alleles. And some may inherit two dominant alleles, or at least if one of the alleles would be dominant, then phenotype would be normal. And uh, if such a person would marry homozygous recessive person for this condition, we also expect that all their children also would be homozygous recessive. We don't need uh, Punnett square to draw Punnett square in order to predict outcome of two homozygous people. 100% of the progeny, as you see, also we expect to be homozygous recessive. So how come that uh, this children here all normal and actually we cannot explain this uh, with one gene one trait uh, theory actually most of the traits are under the control of many genes imagine for example the model where we have two genes and one gene on the chromosome so let's use one color for the chromosome and another color for the gene. Let's say this is going to be non-coding sequence with blue color and with green color. This is going to be a coding sequence of the genes. I do not show here in trons. Let's say this is going to be gene A and this is going to be gene B what might happen in organism. Uh, take a look. It may happen that one person can be homozygous recessive for uh, one gene, say gene A. And that means that such a person wouldn't be able to produce normal protein. The genotype would be small a, small a, but for the gene B, his genotype would be normal, capital B, capital B. And imagine that a gene A, for example, makes certain protein. Usually most of the proteins are globular proteins. And gene B produce, let's say, another protein. It can be enzyme that modifies uh, this protein, let's say cleave it in certain places, and we have final product which looks like this. And if any proteins of the system and enzymes are also proteins, so if this protein would be 
misshaped, then this enzyme cannot properly change its uh, conformation and the final product wouldn't be uh, properly made. But we also may have a situation where one gene, gene A, can be normal, but the other gene B would be defective. Take a look. For example, gene A would be capital A, capital A, but gene B would be small b and small b. Again, those uh, in this model, normal protein would be produced by the gene A, but uh, enzyme, which would be uh, a product of the gene B, uh, would be uh, defective and wouldn't be able properly modify this globular protein and final product also would be misshaped. So in both these cases, we would see that proper protein is not going to be made because one part, uh, in the first case, this is going to be gene A is missing. And in the second uh, variant, gene B is also missing or it's going to be uh, misshaped and is not working properly. How this affect our picture, our pedigree here? Now imagine that parents in the first generation here would be capital A, small a, and capital B, capital B. So capital A, small a, capital B, capital B. For example, this child here would be small a, small a, and capital B, capital B. And this child also would be small a, small a, and capital B, capital B. And the same is true for this person also. So such uh, two people who have genotype small a, small a, capital B, capital B, would produce children who is also would have this genotype small a, small a, capital B, capital B. And in particular, we are interested in the genotype of this person who is going to be cap uh, small a, small a, and capital B, capital B. And parents here can be of the genotype capital A, capital A, capital B, small b. Capital A, capital A, capital B, small b. And now imagine that genotype of this child would be capital A, capital A, and small b, small b. This person inherit small b from each parent for the gene b. So would be deaf, but uh, his uh, brother and sister uh, may inherit at least one dominant allele for each allelic pair. And uh, both uh, of these parents of these children would be of the same genotype. So let's imagine that this person married another person with the same genotype. And of course, the children also would be of the genotype capital A, capital A, and small b, small b. So now we have two deaf people. So this couple would be deaf. But one, because gene A doesn't make normal protein, but another can make this normal protein, but doesn't make normal enzyme. So both alleles are defective. So this is this uh, situation. What is going to happen in their children? All their children are going to have at least one dominant allele A from one parent because uh, this parent has two dominant alleles. So all children would have dominant allele A and from the other parent would inherit recessive allele A. From this parent they can inherit only dominant allele B and from another parent they can inherit only recessive allele B. So all these children would have the same genotype for these two 
genes. But this also means because they have one dominant allele in each allelic pair, they would be able to produce normal globular protein and they would be able to produce normal enzyme that would change conformation of this globular protein into its final uh, form, into its final conformation. So all these children are not going to be affected uh, like their parents. So this is recessive genetic condition, but as you see, if this trait is under control of two genes, then we can uh, see the picture like in this pedigree. Uh, from the first glance, it looks like it is not possible, but taking into consideration that uh, usually most of our traits under control of many genes, it can be even uh, the whole cascade of different uh, chemical reactions within organisms, which would be under control of different genes and enzymes that those genes produce. So such situation, as we see here, is highly probable. And this is all for today. Thank you for your attention. Please subscribe for my new videos that I post almost every day and see you in the next video. Goodbye.